one thing that really makes a state grow and thrive is having a war. War feeds itself. Once you create the enemy, once you build the institutions, it will keep perpetuating itself forever. All right, that's a clip from the new docuseries, America's War on Drugs. It's a four-part series exploring the origins and unexpected effects that the drug war has taken on American politics and culture. The series also delves into the direct ties between the drug trade and United States foreign policy. Additionally, viewers will get a glimpse into the alleged secret motivations the government may have had for its involvement in the drug war. Joining me now is executive producer of History Channel's new docuseries, America's War on Drugs, Anthony LaPay. Welcome, Anthony. Hey. Uh, so much interesting stuff in here, and I, I want to start with Richard Nixon. Last night on the show, I talked about Roger Stone, who was one of Nixon's protégés, who uh, said that you know Nixon's kickstarting of the war on drugs was his greatest failure. What role did Nixon play in the war on drugs? Nixon was really the first president to declare a nationwide offensive, he called it, against drugs. He really felt that drugs were the thing that were, were driving the country into sort of a, into a state of out of control. Yeah. Um, uh, but really, there's a lot of uh, evidence that we found and other people have found that there was some other ulterior motives behind Nixon's declaration of war on drugs. Yeah, and, and part of the series shows that, you know, cities like Miami really sprung up and prospered during the drug trade or during the cocaine phase of the 70s and 80s, but there were other cities that were completely ravaged. And, and the contrast between the two was pretty stark. Yeah, I mean, the, the story of Florida is fascinating because we, we actually start our uh, series looking at what happened in 1960 when Castro takes over Cuba and the CIA now looks to try to take down Castro and teams up with a bunch of gangsters yeah. who have been, were running guns and drugs through Havana and launch a, a plot to kill Castro that ends up failing but ends up empowering this whole generation of Cuban Americans or become who they become Cuban Americans yeah. that go to South Florida and really kickstart the drug trade. So there's all these really weird interesting connections between the Central Intelligence Agency and uh, the drug trade and it happened also in Southeast Asia yeah. and the whole heroin um, explosion that Nixon was reacting to in some part in 1971 was in part a result of a secret war we were fighting in Laos. Yeah, and, and the war we've been fighting in Afghanistan, America's longest war. I mean, you could argue that the drug war is America's longest war, but is Afghanistan, we've only got about a half minute left, yeah. is Afghanistan a drug war? Afghanistan has turned into a drug war. Yeah. Uh, the Taliban really is just a gigantic uh, drug trafficking militia at this point. And both sides were protecting drug lords over there, and the Taliban itself is, and now t Afghanistan is responsible for 90% of the world's opium. Wow. When in 2000, uh, September 10th, 2011, it was about 30%. So that just goes to show you there's a real connection between American foreign policy or overseas wars yep. and the war on drugs. Yeah, and, uh, and what follows from that policy is, is so serious, it can be so deadly. And that's why as libertarians we talk about it so much and we have to be vigilant about people like Jeff Sessions who want to restart the war on drugs because we know the consequences. We haven't learned from them. Hopefully our government will and everyone will watch this docuseries. Anthony, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate having you.